Welcome to the class, Matt Prince, the Prince of PR at Taco <laughs> Bell. Matt, what do you do at Taco Bell exactly? Uh, well, so I'm the uh, senior manager of public relations and brand experience. So um, the way that we kind of divide our public relations efforts is by protection and promotion of the brand. So protection is think crisis communications, um, you know, corporate relations, that kind of stuff. And then there's the promotion of it. So all the fun and sexy things like uh, new food products, new men, you know, new restaurant launches, new kind of experiential programs, whether we're launching a hotel or whether we're launching a, a new beer partnership, whatever it may be, I get to focus on all the fun stuff, which is, which is cool. So um, I've been there for seven years and got to do some amazing things, uh, whether it's like I said, launching a Taco Bell hotel creating Taco Bell weddings, bringing the taco emoji to life, um, saving the first Taco Bell ever. Um, we've got to do a lot of fun things in the past uh, seven years. Wow, that, that sounds like a dream job. How did you end up, can you, can you talk about your journey? How did you, can you talk about your early career and how you got to where you are now? Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I'm born and raised in Southern California. I went to Cal State Fullerton and started off as an English major. I wanted to be an English professor. That was my that was my goal. Um, and then kind of into my major, I realized this wasn't exactly what I thought it would be. You know, it wasn't as fun as I imagined it to be. And I remember seeing public relations as an option as a major, and I didn't know what it was. And I, I sat in on a couple classes and was just blown away about how it kind of combined my love for writing and reading and and media with relationships and um, just culture. And it, I thought it was just really cool. And so I changed my major and got involved in PRSSA and got involved in the local clubs and organizations. And I really enjoyed it. And I remember my senior year, I needed an internship. And coincidentally, my professor, who was an adjunct professor, he also worked at the city of Anaheim and was a, um, worked for the city manager and, and mayor. He asked me to class after one, one day and said, hey, um, you know, I've loved your writing style, I love um, your work ethic. Would you want to come intern for me at the city of Anaheim for the 150th anniversary of the city? And I needed my internship. So I said, absolutely. And joined that team. And what was supposed to be a, a three-month internship was about a, a year-long kind of stint. And I really, really enjoyed it. I got to do everything from speech writing for the mayor to event planning for the, the big celebrations to writing for the magazine and, and planning other events as well. Um, so I really got to touch a lot of different things and figure out what I liked about PR, what I didn't like. Um, and kind of can, can see my career taking off from there. Within that time, I got a call from the county. Um, we're in the Orange County, so we got a call from the county. And they said, hey, we love what you've done with the city. Would you want to come do that for the Chamber of Commerce? And I said, absolutely. I needed my first you know, real job after graduation. Started with them, events and communications. Was there for about, I'd say maybe six months or so, just working my butt off. And my boss, who is director of communications, got in a little tiff with our CEO. He ended up walking out. CEO asked me, hey, would you want to take his job? And said, absolutely. I was uh, kind of in the right place at the right time. Wasn't really, uh, I'd say, uh, properly trained, not properly trained, but I, I, would, there, I had no business accepting the director of communications role at the age of 23. But, um, but I took advantage of it, worked my butt off and was there for about three years. And um, that at the time was the start of kind of the social media revolution for businesses. And so I, I really got to have a a really strong hand on that and lead them in a, in a, in a way that um, was, was beneficial. So that was great. Within that time, we got to work with a lot of different um, companies within Orange County. The biggest one, of course, is Disney. And so I eventually I got a call from them that said, hey, we loved what you've been doing with the county. Would you want to come handle communications for our president? And I said, absolutely. President so I went over there. Disney. President of well, Dis Disneyland at the time. Yeah. 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 Uh, and so he, uh, so I said, absolutely. And I went over there at 26 and um, again, had no business probably being in that role. I was the youngest senior manager in the entire Walt Disney company and just, uh, just try to soak up every single thing that I could. So I handled all the communications for the president of Disneyland and the executives that were based in Southern California, anything from a thank you note to a presentation to a state of the city address I got to, to, to handle. And it was a really great way to, to kind of um, meet a lot of different people within the company and just learn about the company in a different way that, uh, that I loved it. I got to write scripts for Mickey Mouse. It was, it was, it was really cool. Got to do a lot of fun stuff that I never thought I'd get the chance to do. And then 
about two and a half years, two, two years in, I realized I wasn't going to be a speechwriter for the rest of my life. And I wanted to kind of reassess um, where my path was going. And so I kind of looked around at the time and saw an opportunity within the digital marketing team to um, lead a social media monitoring and engagement team. Um, so at the time, Disney really didn't have any sort of um, engagement with consumers through social. It was always one-way communication. So this was a program to really change that for the first time and engage with guests while they were in the parks, help um, their experiences while they were in the park, help drive the business and behaviors while consumers were in the parks. And I did that for another two years, loved it. And, you know, my main job was to experience things in the park, ride the rides, eat the food, document it, and post it on social media. It was a real tough job, um, but, uh, but someone had to do it. And then within that time, I, I got a call from Taco Bell and they said, hey, we love what you do with Disney. Would you want to come do that for your, us at Taco Bell? And like I said, I've been there for seven years now and, uh, and have, have loved every, every minute of it. So I'm, I'm seeing some themes. First of all, you, you are the luckiest man on earth. <laughs> but second of all, you, it sounds like your advice right away is don't be afraid of taking on a big challenge as long as you're willing to work through it. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, I think a lot of times, you know, going into a new job, even the one you feel maybe you're underqualified for, I think um, it can be overwhelming. It can be very intimidating, but um to exude confidence, to, to be there like you know you should be there, I think is, is really important, even if on the inside you're freaking out, which I at all times am. Um, but to, to kind of show that you need, you're, you're supposed to be there, I think is really important. And also, you know, a lot of times people don't apply for jobs because they don't think they meet the requirements on that piece of paper, the job description. And, you know, a lot of times, like I said, I haven't had a single job that I've been qualified for. Um, and I think that's important to think about too, like to always take that chance. And the worst thing that you can hear is no, and, and it's never really a personal decision. Um, but I think you can learn from those things and, and, um, and uh, take chances and then you'll end up in places that you never thought you'd be. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. So Matt, um, I'm assuming that most people, when they think about Taco Bell and who are the key stakeholders, right? Who are, who's the target audience? I think most of my students I'm imagining are thinking about Friday night at 1 a.m., right, with, with a, a double chalupa. But who really is the key stakeholder? Who, who's the key consumer for Taco Bell? Yeah, uh, I mean, the key consumer for Taco Bell, um, who eats Taco Bell, is literally everyone. Like, if you look at the demographics, it, it goes all the way from 16 to, to 60 um, and above. The, the largest growing demographic, surprisingly, is 60 plus. Um, a lot of people who are just retiring, who no longer want to cook, who just kind of, um, you know, want it's easier to you know, to take out food. Um, but I would say, and your initial assumption of the target demographic is not very far off. We target the 25 year old um, because it's such an aspirational age. And what I mean by that is when you're 16, you want to be 25. When you're 60, you want to be 25. Mm -hmm. So by targeting that one demographic, you kind of have this overlapping and overflowing reach into just about everybody. So, um, you know, while we don't specifically go out and target, you know, the stoners, um, we know that that's going to be a part of the overlapping effect. Um, and while we don't particularly go out after the 60 year olds, we know that's gonna be an overflowing effect. So um, so also one thing to keep in mind is the 25 year old evolves and changes, right? So when we developed this strategy, the 25 year old was a millennial. Um, and now as we get into the shifting of generations, the 25 year old is close to being a Gen Z. And the, the way that those generations treat brands and treat um, uh, how they engage with brands is very different and will continue to be different. You know, the 25 year old in 10 years is going to be very different than the 25 year old now. So I think that's also important for us to evolve with that, that changing demographic. Um, even though if it stays the same age, it's going to shift and, and change just the way that the generations do. And is there, is there a psychographic uh, description maybe of a Taco Bell user? Sure. Um, I'm sure I'm sure there is somewhere, <laughs> um, uh, but I I don't I don't have it for the life of me. Uh, can't pull it out in the back of my but head, but I, 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 I can track it down. Not vegetarians who are very much into nutrition necessarily, right? Um, yeah, well, I mean, you 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 know, we actually are a big vegetarian destination. Mexican food in general is very. Um, 
flexible in this in the sense of like the proteins that you're able to use. So we are the only brand in the industry to be certified by the American Vegetarian Associ Association. Um, we have the most vegetarian options by any restaurant um, in the industry, which is which is great, and, and vegan options as well. Um, and you know, people I think all the time bring up like, hey, this is it's um, it's not healthy eating. It's it's kind of a, a splurge. And in a lot of ways, that's 100% right. I think, you know, we're never going to get away from the cheesy, beefy, melty, you know, kind of goodness that um, Taco Bell is. Um, but I think the brand has done a really good job over the past 10 years to kind of see where the trends and culture are taking um, and kind of and follow suit. So, you know, everything from the vegetarian association to, um, you know, removing antibiotics and colors and removing, um, you know, cage-free eggs and, um, you know, all of those types of things that, that we're seeing within culture, like we're matching suit, uh, which I think is, which is good. But, um, but yeah, I think they've done a good job over the past 10 years. And following so Matt, let, let me ask you to uh, piggyback on that. Uh, in terms of a lot of uh, brands are in, inspired to become more uh, involved in activism. Has Taco Bell been a part of that? Yeah, you know, I think one of the good things that we've seen come out of the past year and a half, um, obviously, it's just been such a, a tough year, not only the pandemic, but racial injustices, I mean, everything that's just happened. Um, it's forced brands to be more transparent with where they sit on a lot of different programs or um, responsibilities, which I think is great. I think consumers and um, society needs to hold brands more accountable in those areas. So I, I really, I really appreciate it across all brands, kind of learning and hearing from them in different ways. Because um, now more than ever, the you know the Gen Z, they want to be part of brands that they can believe in, that they feel like they're making decisions um, that would reflect the decisions that they would make. Uh, so they need to know, Taco Bell, where do you stand on Black Lives Matter? Taco Bell, where do you stand on the safety during the pandemic? Um, and we need to do a good job of, of saying, hey, this is what we believe in and this is what we're doing, um, not only to um, you know, support it, but also you know, change it if it needs to be changed. Um, and, and, and we've done a, a fairly decent job. I think that the challenge that we have as a franchise organization is that Taco Bell um, has hundreds and thousands of franchisees that run the business. So um, for those that don't know, you can basically buy into a Taco Bell business. You are the franchisee. You are the one running the business. It's your business. Um, and we are just the brand that we kind of help support you and give you the tools to do it. But you as a franchisee could obviously believe in whatever you want and support whatever you want. Um, and we don't have a necessary say in that. So it's, it's hard to balance the, um, what Taco Bell believes in and what our franchisees believe in, because sometimes it always doesn't match up. Um, but we're going to continue to do our best to push um, on any sort of the social injustices and, and, and anything that we feel like we need to and can make a difference in, we're going we're gonna to do so. All right, perfect. All right, let's go back to the PR function. A lot of people, when they think about public relations, they primarily think about publicity. Right, so getting you know getting the CEO into the Wall Street Journal or you know, posting content on social media and engaging that way. Can you speak about some other key public relations functions that you're involved in, and that maybe you didn't expect to be involved in? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I mentioned protection and promotion a little bit earlier, and I think that's really an interesting point of the the role. Uh, half of our job is getting stuff in the news, as you mentioned, and then the other half of our job is keeping stuff out of the news. Uh, and I think that's such an interesting, you know, um, juxtaposition that you don't see in a lot of different um, professions. And, and, I, and I love that about it. So on the protection side, we have uh, an amazing, and if you guys were in person coming to the, the Taco Bell headquarters, I'd tour you around our, our fishbowl, which is 12 monitors of real-time social monitoring and um, listening. And it's, and it's fascinating that you can just see anywhere in the country or even the world, what people are talking about and, and, and relates to the brand. And it, it helps us, you know, keep our finger on the pulse of, of the brand conversation. A lot of times when there are issues at the restaurants or consumers have issues with the brand, the first thing that they do is not call us. They don't call the restaurant. They post on social media, right? That's just the natural behavior of, of people. Um, and it's not usually even directed at the brand that you're upset with. You're just tweeting it to your followers or posting it to your friends. And so we can tap into that and, and monitor that and, and move a lot quicker than we could, you know, 
two years ago, five years ago, of course, 10 years ago. And, um, and that's really important. Speed is really important when it comes to crisis communications, because, um, you know, if someone reaches out to us and says, hey, so this happened in your restaurant, what's going on? Uh, we can say, there's no issue. A team member did something stupid. They've been fired. We've retrained the restaurant. We've cleaned the restaurant. Whatever the issue was, we can we can basically have answers to all the things, and say that you know there's really there's not really much of a story here. Um, and so being able to get up front in front of those things is really really helpful. Um, so crisis, I think, is is absolutely huge um, uh, aspect of the role that typically is not as fun, like I said, um, but it's you know it, it, just as if not more important than than the fun stuff. Yeah. Matt, so awesome. We're, we have so much more to cover, but we're running short on time. Uh, can you speak about influencers and how much of an impact they have on your overall engagement strategy? Yeah, influencers are huge. I mean, obviously, um, the role that they play within social media for all of us is is different and changing and evolving. Um, you know, we uh, are lucky enough to have a lot of celebrities um, be huge fans of Taco Bell's. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're part of our influencer program, but uh, we do our best to ensure that that relationship is a good one. So if Katy Perry waits two hours in line in Shibuya, Japan for a Taco Bell opening, uh, we're not paying her to do that, but we're going to send her some swag to say thank you and make sure that the relationship between the brand is good because we know we're going to get more value from her organically posting about the brand than we could if we paid her for an endorsement or things like that. Um, where we usually focus around our influencer engagement is the, the smaller micro influencers that have um, strong engagement within their communities. So whether it's gaming or, um, you know, nostalgia or uh, cooking or, um, you know, whatever these smaller communities are that Taco Bell has, you know, great ties to, we're going to work with those folks that have great engagement. So you get a little bit of balance of that strong star power um, that we can help support and build. Um, and then you have the kind of smaller community fandom, the, the cult of Taco Bell, as we call it, that we can help amplify. Um, and it gives kind of people a larger, larger voice. Fantastic. Uh, Matt, uh, two more things I wanted to speak to you about. First of all, if, um, if you were to give advice to my students beyond, beyond the many pieces of advice you already shared today, uh, what kind of advice would you give them as they get ready to graduate and get into the field of strategic communication? Yeah, um, you know, the way that I told my story was very deliberate in the sense that I've never applied for a job that I've had in my career. I've always been recruited from a job that I love into a job that I love even more. And to me, that was always the goal. And I, I realized, you know, on a, a resume, it's very hard to stand out. And, you know, so I wanted to rely on the things that I couldn't handle, which were the relationships in my network. And, and I wanted to be at the top of everyone's I know a guy list, which is basically when jobs become available or opportunities become available, they look around the room and say, hey, does anybody know who would be good for this job? And it was my goal to be on the top of that list. And you do that by networking, by building relationships, like genuine relationships um, through social, through real life, when real life comes back. Um, you know, that was always important to me. Um, and so I think a big piece of advice is to network, get out there, communicate, have a strong personal brand that you can really feel confident in that if, if resumes didn't exist, are you confident that you can find a job? Because I think that's kind of how you should approach and look at things. And the other thing I will say and advice for, for students graduating is don't put as much pressure on yourself as you probably do. I know I was in that camp where it's just, I have to find a job right away. I have to move quickly. I, if I don't get a job and I'm, I'm falling behind. When you look at the, the timeline of your life of working, your chances are you're going to graduate in your early 20s and you're going to retire when you're in your mid 60s, maybe hopefully. Um, but that's like 40, 45 years of work. And if you look at a timeline of 45 years and you look at three months after graduation or six months after graduation, it's a blip. It's a blip on the radar. So if you need to take time off to recharge, if you want to travel, if you want to do things, if you have the flexibility to do that, I would encourage that because it's burnout's a real thing and 45 years is a long time. So take your time, relax, um, and don't put as much pressure on yourself. Awesome, awesome. Uh, Matt, you recently launched a new website which offers resources to uh, people in our field. Can you speak about this website? What's all that? Yeah, so, yeah, um, so just the other week, I, I launched a, a site called NetNet Net Synergy. It's netnetsynergy.com. And it was born out of just kind of what I mentioned about the, the importance of networking and mentorship. And for me, like I said, my career was based on those things and the, 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 
success that I've had has been dependent on the, the mentorship of others in the industry. And I realized, you know, during the pandemic, I think that's harder than it has always been just because you don't have those in-person relationships. So um, what NetNet Synergy is, is really kind of a tool resource. It's a, it's a place where you can go to be paired up with mentors or at least get you know, notified of who is uh, freeing themselves up for any sort of virtual coffees or mentorships to allow you to connect with them uh, across any sort of industry, any sort of profession within public relations and marketing. Um, and we also have job postings on there as well. So um, for internships and entry level jobs, uh, I wanna make sure that there's just kind of a hub that you can kind of go to see, hey, here are the new jobs, here are those people that are helping me along the way. And here's some resources that I can use to, to be successful in my journey. Amazing, amazing. So um, again, I'll post the uh, link to the website uh, in the comment section of this YouTube video. Matt Prince, Taco Bell, you are awesome. And thank you so much for taking the time today. Of course. Thanks for having me.